thanks everybody for uh, coming along to today's call. Um, there are, um, well, there are three, three things that I'd like to try and cover today. Um, uh, some of them are just kind of progress updates, and, but also just want to kind of share some thinking and get some feedback uh, from you all. Um, so the first thing that I want to uh, cover is um, just some updated uh, thinking around uh, facilities. Um, while I circulated a proposal before, I've been having a bit more of a think around how we actually approach this in the specification. So I run that, want to run that by you. Um, we can, uh, Nick can give a, an update on the kind of work that's in progress around the booking API um, and give a space for uh, anyone who has any questions or comments to give some feedback. Um, and I've got some uh, thoughts to share around how we start to improve the quality of the uh, published data. Um, so we can have a bit of a conversation around validation. Um, and again, and if there's anything else that anyone wants to add, um, then uh, well, we should have some time at the end to know how things go. Um, so the we've we've got kind of several th several things that we're working on at the moment. Um, booking has been a, a bit of a priority over the last last few weeks really, we, we've had the workshop, we've been working on a variety of documents that we shared with the group. Um, that means that we haven't made as much uh, progress as I'd hoped around getting the facilities uh, mod data model into the specification. Um, I did pick that up again last week um, uh, to start making some edits so that we can publish a 1.1 version of the opportunity model. Um, I wanted to just kind of recap a little bit about the last discussion that we had around facilities. Um, probably, I think it might have been just, be, just after Christmas now, I went through a, a series of use cases and requirements around uh, facilities just to kind of summarize some of the discussions that we've had. Um, so this, this slide just kind of is what I showed before. It's the kind of questions that we need to be able to ask of uh, data about facilities. So which ones are at which locations? the activities that can be carried out, um, how to find the squash court, availability of squash court, etc. Um, based off that, I, I was originally proposing that we would um, uh, uh, add some features to the specification, um, but since I've been kind of looking at um, the way that this data is actually being used in a, in a few services, including um, my local pitch, uh, and having a bit of a discussion with Nick about it last week, um, I've got some slightly different, a slightly different take on it. Um, not a major change, but just uh, just a slight reframing that will mean the model will be slightly different. So I just wanted to kind of run this past you all briefly here. Um, but I've also got a, a proposal that document that I'll share with the list, and you can kind of digest at your leisure. So the the key difference um, is. Uh, previously, I was suggesting that we need to be able to describe facilities. So it was very much about focusing on um, the locations or the equipment that is available at a location. Um, and then think about how we the surface things like the availability of that equipment. But I, I don't think that's the, the right approach in the model um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, mainly, I think, because it, it means that we could in danger of getting caught up in some of the discussions we've had around the complexity of how you know a sports hall etc can be, might be um, reconfigured or, uh, or used in different ways for different uh, different activities somebody who is just looking to um, book a badminton court or a squash court etc they just want to know that that is um, available to them um, that there is opportunity to do that they're not really interested in the detail of how a leisure center manages its kind of internal configuration and spaces. So um, I think a better framing is to, is to and this is Nick's suggestion, um, which is a good one, I think, uh, is to think about it more as, as a product that's being offered to the user. So what we need to describe is that there is an opportunity to book a facility. Um, and that's the kind of level of detail that we should be putting into the into the data feeds. So we need to better um, describe those products, um, say which of those products are associated with activities, 
um, but obviously also kind of describe the availability, the kind of um, the slots in which somebody can, you know, uh, uh, book a pitch, book a court, etc. Not really proposing to change how we're approaching that. It's just that kind of whether we're focusing on the space, the or the equipment, or the um, the pr product, but more kind of product centric view. Um, so, with that in mind, what the what I've just tried to put together a kind of hopefully reasonably non technical kind of summary of, of the, how I think the the data model would look. So, I think what we should be adding to the specification is something that I've provisionally called a bookable facility which will be a type of, of product as far as schema.org is concerned. Um, a, there'll be a whole range of information that will need to be associated with that facility. You know, things like uh, name, description, images, etc. All of that is already covered by the existing data model. Um, so we can, we, uh, we can include that. So if you want to include pictures of pitches or descriptions of them, um, that, that's all going to be um, possible. Um, we may need to indicate where it is. So in some, for some facilities, again, use a pitch example, we might want to be able to say something about whether it's indoor or outdoor, um, where it is, uh, maybe some information about the surface that's being played on. So we should be able to kind of say where this facility is, if, if the location is important. Uh, we want to be able to say um, when you're booking that, facility, what's the activity or activities that, that you're um, that are on offer. Um, so that provides a way for somebody to just filter out stuff in the data that, that, that they're, they're not interested in. So if you only wanted to provide people with some a list of pitches or a list of squash courts or table tennis um, uh, tables, then you could just filter based on the activity. Um, and then the in terms of providing prices and describing slots, um, that's essentially how I was proposing to do it before, and it's using stuff that we're already, we've already got in the model. So we would just associate an offer with each product. So that will have the things like the price. Um, and then we'll associate the, uh, we'll describe the availability using the events property. So each slot um, uh, that something could be booked for will be a separate discrete event. Um, one of the reasons for doing that is that this hooks nicely, I think, into the draft booking API that um, Nick has been working on, which is largely focused on around um, uh, offers. Uh, um, so I think it's uh, it, it's still, I think, fairly simple addition to the specification, but it's just a slight reframing of the, of the data model. Um, I've got a possibly slightly more coherent <laughs> description of what I've just described in a GitHub issue. So I've kind of outlined the high level requirements. So what the use cases are, the reasons for approaching it in the way that I've described. Um, summarized the information that we need to be able to attach to a facility, how we would describe the availability of a, of a facility, uh, and some notes on around if we needed to describe the facility itself. Uh, how we might go about doing that. And I've put some five specific questions in there. Um, it would be really useful um, for you all to kind of have a read through that, digest it, and, um, and maybe just uh, put your, share your comments. You can either share them with me and I'll put them into GitHub, or if you want to just uh, comment directly on the issue in GitHub, then, then, then please do so. So it just means that I can help sanity check what I'm proposing. Um, and then I can make the uh, make the uh, the changes to the specification. Um, I was planning to do that by Friday. So if there's any if you're able to kind of give me some, even some early thoughts, it would be useful to start to um, uh, shape up this this area of the model so that we can kind of move this forward. Because I know that there's 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 a number of data fees at the moment that are kind of waiting on uh, the ability to be able to do this. Um, so that's a kind of a quick overview of what I'm proposing to do. Has anyone got any uh, comments or feedback? Uh, it looks good to me, Dave. Lee. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Um, sorry, what, what, um, two quick questions I think we wanted to ask. Uh, 
uh, I don't know if this, have you already asked Jamie Lee from our last conversation about the surface stuff? No, I didn't, I did, because I only got a chance to kind of put this, start to sketch out this proposal now. I haven't had time to chat with him. So it'd be good to discuss this. Yeah, well, um, basically, it's, I suppose it's a Jamie and Tom question. And obviously, the, one of the reasons this isn't just an event, because it could be an event at the moment. If, if you go back to the slide there, Lee, um, you had just now. Um, this one. The slide on, yeah. So uh, all those properties exist in event already. And so we could just use event, um, but there's a subtle difference in the semantics because this isn't an event, it's a wash court or it's a table tennis table or it's a whatever. Um, and so it has other properties that aren't just the event. Um, and so some of the properties we've been talking about were the kind of surface, you know, concrete or uh, 3G or whatever it is. Um, and, and other properties like that, uh, we don't didn't have a view other than there were probably some useful properties like this that we um, might want to think about. Um, and so I just wondered if you guys had a view of if those things are useful to capture. So should we be trying to get people to publish the surface along with their court or their whatever? Um, and then are there other properties like that that we should include in this? Sure. Um, so we do have a structure that we use uh, at my local pitch that um, outlines different types of surfaces. Um, and we've tried to simplify it um, uh, so that I think for a football fit pitch, for example, there are five different types, um, ignoring the kind of marketing ploys used by some to invent new surfaces such as 5G. Um, I thought that they would probably be accounted for within the tags that you've described here, such as indoor. Um, uh, the same goes for things like floodlights, which are really important and have um, flagged haven't been included yet in the active places data sets. Um, and that is crucial for, um, for us uh, and businesses similar to us. So, Again, that could be a tag. I, I know tags are a very useful and flexible way of um, uh, kind of aligning properties, assigning properties to facilities. Um, if you want though, I can share what the um, uh, structure is that we use at uh, MLP uh, and you can have a look at that and see what you think. Uh, yeah, I think I'd, I'd be interested to see that if you're happy to share it. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, so I think as far as Nick and I got, um, were in, because we would be saying this bookable facility is a product, so we draw on schema.org again. Um, uh, products are defined as having a category, so that's, we could just say, you know, this is a indoor, uh, and put, just put these as tags there. It's, it's not a very, it, it, um, it's flexible, but it also is, doesn't really, uh, capture a lot of the distinction you know if somebody was only really interested in listing out like different types of surfaces then they might, we might want some more specific properties um, yeah I think yeah what well, because looking at the open active spec comparatively for the uh, the events work we've been doing it's very detailed in like you know has it got a coach is there a leader is there a you know we've gone into all the properties that are relevant there and so, I, I mean, we could have put a tag on it to say is coached and we could put tags on things to say, but we did, we did kind of make the distinction in properties. So just kind of thinking about whether facilities should get the same almost thorough treatment. If we're sure that those things are useful enough that we're sure to put them in, if it's kind of like, well, there's some properties, no one really knows what we should put in, maybe they would, they should be tags. But if it's like everyone knows services useful, actually there's five options. It's just kind of, maybe it's better to just stick it in there. Yeah, I mean, there, there will always be a surface at a facility to kind of state the obvious. So that is something that you know um, you can assign to a facility. Um, perhaps there are others like floodlights which are slightly less consistent. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, surface is is, is really important when um, uh, you know publishing the data and showing it to users. Uh, so, so very possibly you could add, add that in. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I'll just jump in a little bit of a, a bit of a noisy today, so I won't, I won't uh, bore you for too long. Um, yeah, I agree with Jamie's two categories. 
Um, <laughs> see any, any other ones that useful except for um, yeah, the floodlights is, is really important if you can get that one published and um, surface type as well. But there's not too many variables which are relevant to surfaces. Are there any other variables that you use to search things or that would be useful to have in a search apart from surface floodlight across all the different activity types that you guys think of? No. <clears throat> Tom, Tom saying no. Uh, right, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I said no. Yeah, I agree with that. Jamie, yeah, you enough. agree on that as well? Yeah, I'm just actually having a look at um, one of our docs. One second. So I'm not missing anything. All right. Someone's already done this. <laughs> Somewhere. Uh, two seconds. <laughs> sure. Uh, no, I mean, so we, we have parking, floodlights, and changing rooms uh, as the three kind of additional facilities that you can assign to a venue. Um, you then have the format um, that I know we've discussed in previous meetings and the surfaces. Um, format? Uh, so format would be uh, five aside, seven aside, 11 aside, Right. Are we? Is that in our? Is that in this, Lee? Um. Well, the I, I guess I thought was thinking that would just be like in the tags, but um, I know we've talked about format before, largely in the kind of the context of you know, whether it's an, that's an activity or not, or whether it's something separate. Um, um, yeah, so I would say it kind of depends, doesn't it, uh, on the sport, but, um, you know, because you'll only really get one tennis court. Um, you can get tennis courts without the doubles lines, uh, so I suppose that could be a case example, but again, something like squash court is only one format. But for other um, sports like football, um, uh, the um, type of um, pitch, the size is, is, is important. I wonder as well, you know, for example, cricket, if we're talking about making this much more accessible to people, which we are, um, people are more interested in searching for cricket nets, we find, than cricket pitches. Um, it's more of a product that we sell than the kind of full um, cricket pitch. So we have facilitated the search for nets only. Um, and that's a really popular search on the site. Okay, that's a format of oh, yeah. cricket nets. Is a format of cricket or is a separate activity? Uh, yeah, we, we classify it as a format, um, might be clumsy, but uh, you know, the two formats of a cricket pitch will be full size or cricket nets. So, this is the thing because we, we were thinking that we could use overload activity here to cover all the options because 11 is yeah. a different activity to five side, but actually, yeah. if there's something which is both cricket full size and yeah. nets, so they're both cricket, but they're just different. Uh, maybe we do need to format as an explicit thing. I think um, there's another category which I've just, uh, just thought about, is about equipment rental at the facility. Um, I think that'll be useful for things like tennis sports. Um, it's kind of a, a must have, but that's definitely the most Okay. Yeah, that again, sorry. Can you... Equipment rental, sorry, it's louder. Um, I think that category, whether they have equipment rental available um, at the facility would be important. Okay, great. So equipment rental, um, potentially something about um, format. And like you mentioned as well, car parks and changing rooms before too. Um, yeah. We've already got changing rooms and car parks as, uh, in the British cycling data and in something else uh, generally, or not just this, but for activities as well. So I don't know whether we want to put car parks and changing rooms into uh, um, other things. Yeah. Um, so once it, one, sorry. 
So I, I, I'm, I'm just a, a little confused, and, and sorry if I'm being a bit slow here, but um, this is stuff when we were talking about the initial uh, spec of the kind of um, uh, the, the data that um, we did uh, think about then, particularly things like format. Um, what, what would be the link here between, you know, why the difference between the bookings um, uh, spec and that first spec we did uh, a year or so ago? I don't think format ever made its way into the, the session spec. I think it, I think that was facility um, that didn't. I think because we're now we're talking about facilities rather than sessions. I think yeah. That, I think, and that's Lee. You can remember what where format went. Well, I don't think we ever really concluded. So the, because there wasn't a strong, it didn't seem to be a strong requirement because we hadn't really got into this part of the model. We just didn't. We didn't put it into the to the event stuff. It might be worth us revisiting the, the calls from back then, actually, and, and making sure that we would have a yeah. discussion so we don't rework this. I see what you're saying. Yeah, we've, we've done this before. Why don't we use the stuff we did last time? I think it must have been um, a year ago. Yeah, no, I do appreciate And then this is um, uh, the, a different conversation. Yeah, I mean, so, some of the things, so just to go back over a couple of the items that were mentioned there. So, what we did get to originally when we were talking around um, uh, facilities as like locations within a leisure centre, mm -hmm. in the current specification, it says that our definition of place, which uses the, um, it's draws on schema.org, yeah. uh, covers things like facilities within a venue, so squash courts, etc. Yeah. Um, we, so, one way to handle some of this stuff is that um, for the product that's being described via its location, which is a place, mm -hmm. it's the place that has some of the, the tagging. It may not be that, not, so things like whether equipment is available for, for hire or there's car parking feels more about the place. Mm -hmm. um, which might mean we just need to think about how we put some of that onto yeah I mean so um, yeah you know, we, we, we see the kind of structure of uh, the hierarchy I mean as being you know you have the venues at the top of the tree uh, and then underneath them you've got the sports underneath them you've got the formats underneath them you've got the surfaces that makes any sense yeah um, but so it all kind of does link back to the same uh, and, and those venues, I, I, I guess, uh, the places um, would have that sort of data attached. Yeah. Mm. So it sounds like it's just a question whether we put those tags inside location or outside location in the actual structure of the thing. Yeah, I would, I would say if it's something specific to the product, then it should be on, on, on the book or facility. But if it's a kind of fit, if it's if things like markings or availability of car parking seems like it's a more of a, just a, a property of the place because it's going to be unchanged no matter what, yeah. you know, what, for whatever reason you're hiring out that space or location, that it's not, it's not going to change. Yeah. Yeah, the question is, is the place the five-a-side pitch or is the place the leisure centre? See what I mean? Yeah. And the facility, no, that's, yeah. That, that's where, because at the moment there's a, the, the, the five-a-side pitch might have a postcode different to the leisure centre, but maybe it doesn't. Um, it, it depends on what level of abstraction, because there, there will be photos associated with the five-a-side pitch that are different to the leisure centre. Um, then we then need the bookable facility still. So I suppose there's a question of just if I think I feel like there's going to be a bit of a weird uh, line between the distinction for, between the bookable facility and the uh, place which is describing the facility. Um, well, one of, one of the reasons for having this, uh, and maybe the, the name is not ideal, is that uh, once we start focusing on purely on places and people hiring places. And you've got this thing where well, what, what the table tennis table is that a place that's a, that's an equip piece of equipment and then you might need to have another bit of the model that covers 
a piece of equipment that you can hire in a place which feels like another awkward bolt-on so if we just deal with both as a as a product and some of those products are strongly located with a are strongly associated with the location that that feels like it would cover both scenarios because I think from an end user point of view, you don't really care that the table tennis table might be moved around in the leisure center. You just want to book one. Mm -hmm. right. That distinction of what equipment is there is kind of. Ah, that's a really good point, actually. That, that, that's probably a reason to not. Uh, so we don't care which um, uh, pitch we book as long as it has floodlights and there might be three available and all three have floodlights. So I guess in that case, it'd be better to not have specific place, the place not being football pitch, the place being a leisure centre, and the facility being football pitch, because we're not actually necessarily talking about that exact football pitch, I'm guessing. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, as I suppose another question, I know, Jamie, you've got lots of photos already on your system. Do you have situations where you have one photo, but three pitches available, and that photo is of one of those pitches? Or do you always have a photo of each pitch? No, you have one, one photo for... Um, each pitch that covers a format on the surface. So if you have a look at our um, page, I'm trying to think of a venue that's got lots of different surfaces. Yeah, I've got one. I've got you open in a tab. Uh, Shameless advertising here. Apologies. Yeah, so I was just, I was comparing. I, other, other providers are available. <laughs> Etc. Um, one no, of the but, things uh, that we... Uh, um, we distinguish it. And by the way, my apologies for being late. Um, one of the things we distinguish at Legend is between where something is and what it does. Um, an example of that is renting a, a hall, and that hall might be a conference room. It might be split into four parts. It might be a banqueting hall. It might be a theatre. There might be a rock band on. And the layout and the pricing will be different for each of those. So there's the physicality of where it is and there's what it's used for. And we would have different pictures for each of those uses, for example. Um, in, in Jamie's case, you might have a pitch which can do hockey and rugby and football. I'm not sure if you can do all this on the same pitch. Um, and you might have different images depending on what the activity was in the physical location. Activity was Right. How does that match what you've got, Jamie? Yeah, um, I mean, there are slightly more use cases, I think, in, in the hinge. Um, well, but um, yeah, uh, chimes generally true. Um, I think we we do on our on our site if the pitch is used for both um, uh, football and netball, um, then we will list it as um, a football pitch and a netball court. Um, and I think you know that that's just obviously. So if you're making a search for a um, uh, rugby pitch, you can you can find it. Um, I think when it comes to a software, um, you know, uh, software company like Legend, where you would have a, um, you know, one availability calendar is for one pitch, then um, I guess I mean, you know you kind of label it differently depending on where in the site you put it. That makes sense. Sense. But it sounds like there's an equivalence between the surface, no, not the surface. No, because use, which is what Ian's talking about, is different because you've got the same exact thing, which has got a surface property, it's got a floodlights property. Sorry, you dropped off there, Nick. Everything. Oh, sorry. Um, you, we're talking about using the same uh, exact facility. I've got that right. Yeah. yeah. If you, if you have a look at Salford Sports Village, uh, which I've just shared. Um, could, you, could, you, could you just bring that up so it's got it on the video? It's the... Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to find where, where that message has gone. Um, just let me No, I can't find it. Where's... Where did you show it to? Uh, in the chat. If you click the bottom of the... Oh, no, you're at full screen, aren't you? Uh, I've just got a different... I think I've got a different view. You've got Slack open, Lee. 
Have you got some slack? Shall I slack it? Yeah, if you slack it to me. The other thing, just whilst we're looking at that, is that we would, uh, we're would we doing a lot of work on room rentals. And um, in that case, we might be renting a room out, um, which is a physical location. But there may be a projector that you want to rent with it, and that wouldn't be physical location. We may want to rent chairs that go in it, and that wouldn't they wouldn't be physical locations. And if someone wanted to turn his room and said, and by the way, can you put a table tennis table in there? That isn't something we see as a location. However, if they said, I would like to book a, a table tennis session for an hour, which happens to be in the main hall, then it would be the activity we table tennis and the table itself would be implicit in the granting of that booking. So I don't, I don't see a table tennis table as such as being a facility. In yeah. Uh, Nick, you're not coming through. There's the mouth's moving, but the voice is not coming out. Oh, sorry, is that better? Yeah, I think so. But I think you're cutting out quite a lot, actually. Maybe the Wi-Fi in Manchester. <laughs> Who knows? Not the whole of Manchester. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I think we're going to have trouble because your, your video is very, very jerky. So I think it probably is struggling a bit with uh, the bandwidth. Yeah. Oh, um, Turn your video off, Nick. Maybe. Oh, yeah. So I think the, um, I think what Ian, well, I think what you were just describing there, I think that fits the, the model here. It's just that it wouldn't necessarily be a location. It's just you, you've got a a bookable product, which is like people playing table tennis. Yeah. I think that's yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. But I, but I, I, I came in a bit late, so I may have missed one of the points there which is you were talking about a table tennis table as if it was a, a place. I don't think it is. I think it's an accessory or an implicit part of the activity. Yeah, no, so, I, I, uh, yeah, we, we weren't, weren't suggesting that. I, what I was suggesting is that we didn't necessarily need to get into modelling the differences between equipment of that type and facilities, which is why I was proposing a more of a kind of product-centric view of the model. So what is it that is being offered to the end user? But you're not offering them a table tennis table. You're offering them a table tennis activity. Yes. In a room. Yeah. And if you want to, if there's an event of some kind, uh, and they want to rent table tennis tables, yeah, then that table tennis table, uh, as part of a a, uh, a pentathlon, yeah, that would either be extras of some kind. Yeah, or, or it would be, I don't know what it would be. I mean, it depends how, you, how, you, how you'd want to model it. But what I'm trying to get to there, I think there's accessories to an activity, yeah, which wouldn't be locations. They would be, they would be a separate thing. But we got that modeled as in, in our um, version of the API's extras. So there's things you can buy, which may, may or request, which may or may not be free, um, which are on top of the, the activity and the specific to the activity. So an example of that for Jamie might be, um, you don't have your own ball. Unlikely, I'll grant you. Um, um, or for a swimming lesson, it might be a, a logbook you know, or, or um, a swimming cap. So I think there's, there's extras which, which are on top of the, the activity or the place. That, that's a really good, um, can you hear me now? Is that better? That's yeah. lovely, yes. Oh, amazing. Um, so uh, that sounds like it's a, um, uh, that sounds like it's definitely something we need to model, probably not in the facility, because it sounds like you could rent those for any, as part of any session, as you say. It could be a, an extra, could be on any type of course, facility or whatever. Um, we, should, we should model those. Are they, are they as, is there a pick list per activity in Legends? Yes, yeah, so the, if, I believe it's actually in the, the versions of our draft API that you've got. So when you get the details of a, an activity of a class or whatever, uh, then there's also a list of the extras you can purchase. Yeah, so I think that is handled within offer, or, or we could handle it within offer. Yeah. Because the, the offer is, is it's what's been offered to an end user. So you can add something, an event, or in this case, what we're just going to hear, the facility could have multiple offers. Um, 
there's also the thing it's also this thing is giving it all of an add-on mm -hmm. additional offer so so again for supplements extensions so uh there's, you could either have a list of them spelled out or you could just have the main offer the price then refer to these add-ons okay that's cool Add-on's good. That's a good. That's a really good chat because it's related to the presumably members might be. Well, I don't know. Um, certain things might be available to members and members differently, or prices. Certainly, the prices would change depending on if they're a member or not. Yeah. Okay, so that I think that covers then that those add-ons and, and maybe equipment higher. You know, it doesn't let necessarily list all the equipment, but it gives it gives a user an indication that there is that option for them to cover stuff i think there's also a distinction i don't know if the add-ons cover it between a purchase and a hire so there's an extra that you i mean an example of that is um you might want to have uh, if you've got a a pottery course you might want to have china clay as an extra rather than the horrible red stuff that you get in the rivers and that's that's something that you're buying as an add-on Whereas you might have uh, you might have a projector, which is just hired for the day, or you might have something that you buy to go away with. So I think the difference between renting something, which is effectively returned, and something which you keep forever, like a logbook, or a bathing cap, or a or a football. Who knows? Yeah, I think that that is covered, but it's not not the most clearly labelled property. I think this business function. It's got lease out, uh, sell, nice. buy. Repair, sell, okay. And that's on the offer, is it? Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, the, the, all of this stuff in um, schema.org comes from a, another, uh, another model called Good Relations, which was designed around e-commerce systems. So it, it's pretty, it's pretty flexible and it's been kind of road tested in a few systems already. So I think we'll get some benefit from that. Um, just wanted to go back to uh, Jamie's example. To um, so, but Lee, before, just before you go, have, we, have you made a note of those two? Because I'd love to bring those into the modeling, the, the booking spec. Um, or I actually should make a note. Let me make a note. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got a note here for both add on and business function. Perfect. Great. Yeah. We'll put those in. Put those in. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where we, if, if we if we document everything that would be useful, we'll end up just with the whole of schema.org. It's kind of highlighting, if you need to do this, then these things exist. Mm. Um, so, um, anyway, sorry. Um, so, yeah, on, on, on Salford, um, so this uh, rugby pitch, which can also be used as a football pitch, so we will obviously list it as a rugby pitch. But then if you go over to the football tab, um, uh, you'll also, uh, one of those football pitches, I think the seven sides free the AstroTurf will, will cover that rugby pitch as well. Um, or not, one of them will. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so um, I think it might be that one just taken from a different angle. Um, so yeah, you, you can have uh, multiple sports on the same pitch, but we would always want to list it as um, you know different pitches, just so that they can be found as a rugby pitch and as a football pitch. Right. Talking about then, so there's a, there's a pitch, but it's got two different use cases. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it. So, so as, a, as a test then, there's its use as a rugby would be one walkable facility. But again, the name's up for grabs. Mm -hmm. uh, and the location would be the pitch. And then there's another use, which is as a f uh, football. Uh, and it would have the same location. So it's the same pitch, but you could have different name, yeah. images, different price, different set of availability slots. And you can tag it as either football or rugby. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, so bookable facility maps effectively to Ian's uh, to Legends. Use. Yeah, and it, it should. I'm, I'm not not actually currently sure why the rugby pitch there doesn't have a calendar on it because it should. <laughs> we'll check that. But 
Um, it, it would also share the ca share the calendar as well for whatever pitch was on. But it might have a different price as you uh, said that. Yeah. So let me just switch this a second. Do you want me to put anything on screen here, or are you going to take over? Uh, I will. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Great. Um, if you could actually save me switching, if you could just bring up the booking spec, that would be really helpful. Um, So, um, um, and yeah, and I'll, I'll, I have some more thoughts while I was just fiddling with technology just then on the, um, the last conversation about the, 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 court, the court pitch thing, but I'll mention those on the comment or wherever that goes. Um, so, um, so yeah, so we, we've had, we've had a good, um, a good few comments and questions on this now, which is really, really good uh, in terms of the booking stuff. Um, so thanks for everybody who's, who's, who's put, um, content in, uh, and, um, and thoughts. Um, I know that we've, so the early implementations, we've got good gym, which is, I think finished now our parks, um, have we gone through one iteration and, um, um, and so I think we're, we're pretty much there now. Um, uh, I know I, uh, played, our it's not played, sorry. Um, um, makes that are, are progressing it they've got some some way of it done but not not all of it yet and team up uh are going to start doing it this week um and also um legend thank you again for, for sharing things we've um done a bit of a mapping between the legend um the first draft of legend spec that we had and then this draft of this and it's been quite useful to inform uh so that's that's really helpful um so there's a few there's a few things that I just wanted to quickly um, uh, touch on and, and cover from um, here. But just I mean we've only got a few minutes again, uh, so it's really just a case anyone has any particular thoughts on these things. Um, and uh, and then I think the process is working quite well at the moment with all of these individual conversations. We're just trying to track as many of the comments as possible in the in the doc so everyone else can see them. Um, maybe before I uh, cover any particular issues, I don't know. Um, Ian, especially, did you have anything, any thoughts on the, the stuff I've sent over at all, or have you not had a chance to? I regret that I was out of the country last week, and I'm not caught up with last week yet, so Don't worry. I've not had a chance to read them. I've actually got some meetings booked tomorrow to have a look at some of these things in a bit more detail. Oh, brilliant. So okay. I'll get back to you after that. Okay, no problem at all, don't worry. Um, so, uh, in that case, um, yeah, let's, let's just jump into um, some of the, the questions in here. So, if you go down to this, in this document, uh, to... Um, uh, implementation for uh, how, are you, how are you going to find that? There we go. Get if you go down to the um, second call, I think it is. Oh no, get latest offer data one. So, this is the question that we've got at the moment. There's a hash URI um, a conversation that we're having. Um, now, the context for this is if you screw, go down slightly in there, you can see the offers, uh, actually, sorry, if you go up to the previous example, that's probably actually more clear than that, that example. Um, but the offers, um, the previous uh, re response example just above that. So, uh, not in 1B, in fact, in 1, just above. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. So... Um, we've got this idea that everything needs an offer in order to be bookable. Um, so there's, there's, a, there's a subtlety around that, which, um, which the legend in these cases made clear, which is useful. But for this specifically, um, the reason that uh, that's useful is because you want to have different pricing or if you've only got one price. Um, I think we talked about this last time, having one consistent offer that's the thing that you point out is more sensible than having a bunch of different types of objects that can be bookable and pass around. So whatever it is that's that's bookable has an offer and that's the offer that's booked. Um, if you go up to the previous um, response example, Lee, in the previous page, um, you'll see that there's an offer there which is highlighted, um, which is actually not a URL. It's a, it's a hash and then hash bang, then a URL. 
Um, and that's because the endpoint for the session, which is the one here, um, booking.com slash API slash session slash, well, that's the response that gets you the whole of this response. And then that offer is actually referencing this part of that response in there. Um, and basically what this comes down to is that there's a question about whether we would rather have a booking spec that has kind of is, is correct rest, rest, restfully correct in that offer exists in real life or that has less endpoints to implement. So it's simpler to implement. Um, in the conversation at the moment, um, it looks like there's been quite a bit of pushback from the smaller providers on any additional endpoints that they need to implement that, you know, past the, the basic things. It's like, why are we, why are we adding this in? Is that really necessary? Um, and so I just, I, I don't know if anyone has any thoughts on this particular subject. Um, Uh, I believe, but I'm not quite sure, that uh, we try and keep to restful practices uh, as much as possible. Um, but I would need to ask our development team as to exactly why that is, and if it is strictly the case. Um, it would perhaps make sense from a publisher's point of view just to have fewer uh, endpoints, but I'm not really sure. I'm not quite sure I understood the question, Nick, I'm afraid. Um, so the question is um, the. I mean, you've got an ID there that's got some funny bits at the end. Yeah. Are they, what are they, what's that funny bit meant, meant to represent? So it's a path into the JSON document returned when you do a get here. Oops. Okay. So it, it would be, I think it boils down to um, if you want to be able to get, if you want to do like double check what the price is for um, a particular offer that's attached to a. Uh, an event. Are we going to say to people, uh, you need to be able to do a get, you know, that offer needs to be, have a, a URL so you can do a get request on it and get a description of it. Or are we going to allow the, uh, say it's, it's acceptable for those that offer information to be always be inlined into one of the other resources. So in this case, into a specific session. I think that um, in general, I prefer to see it inlined. And one of the reasons for that is because, uh, particularly with things like an app, you want to minimize the backwards and forwards you're going. So if you have even just 10 or 15 um, items and you've got to go off to get 10 or 15 different offer information, um, that's, that's challenging because the latency can be quite bad with a phone app. Mm. So I, and also it has some complexity. Um, I, 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 think, I don't think I like that idea very much. We're talking about the same thing, so I, sorry, just I don't know. <laughs> is that the uh, is so we're saying we'd rather have all the information in one um, request that gives you everything? So the mobile app has to make one request rather than lots of small ones. Yes, yes, we are. Yeah, agree on that. And so that's what this enables um, that you only need this session on its own, and that is everything you need. And then this, this little path offers slash 159 is enough to know which offer you're talking about within the session, so you need to get thing once. So, sorry, you, you, but you know that by virtue of the identifier. So what, what value does that add? The identifier of what, sorry? Well, you've got identifier 159. You've got the hash streak thing is. I, I'm missing the point here, Nick. I'm sorry to be sorry. Oh, no, no. So um, the reason is that the ID, uh, it's a schema.org semantic thing. So the IDs in schema.org need to be URIs so they can return the thing that they are talking about. And so an offer has an ID, which is this moment, but an event, the one above in bold, has an ID, which is the event. And if you wanted to get that ID, the latest version of that, that you just get that, and then that gives you the same thing again. So regardless of how you got to have this bit of JSON as implementation, you can get it, get it again by just following the ID. Um, because the offer is embedded inside the event, um, if it, strictly speaking, that ID should reference an offer and there should be a separate offers endpoint that only returns that tiny snippet of the offer and nothing else. So that the ID goes to an offer, gets you the offer back. Um, and, and what this is saying is actually, rather than having to build another endpoint to get you just an, an offer back, because very rarely do you need to just get an offer. Most of the time you're concerned about it in the context of an event. Um, this is saying that 
but it's still it's still correct because there's a hash there that says um, you could you could, you went to that yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, I finally got it I think okay so why would you want to get the offer again because it's expired uh, because the re the reason that there's an ID for an offer is so you can pass it into the next booking portal. Um, I don't think anyone needs to necessarily get the offer again. They might get the event again, um, because the event's more likely to have the availability information in, which is likely to be out of date, like you say. Less likely you'll just need to get the offer again on its own. Uh, okay. Uh, we would probably not want to use a URI like that. I mean, even though it's illegal, we probably should want to use an identifier. This is the booking, this is the slot we want to book. As in a, a non URI identifier or an, ID, an yeah. URI without hash in it? Well, uh, whatever we did, it would, it would end up being, um, it would just be, a, let's say it would be just a GUID or an integer. I mean, you can wrap it in some, uh, in the URL if you want to, but that, that's just making it bigger and more cumbersome. So I think this is this is a this is a problem that I think we yeah we, we absolutely need to have a have an alternative for because I think everyone's comment is the same as that one, uh, which is that URLs unless there's a particular purpose for having them sorry the ID unless there's a particular purpose for having them as a URL most people just want to use the code that they've already got in the system. Um, so maybe we just need to make sure that the specification works with identifier, for example, 159 on its own or the GUID or whatever it is, instead of requiring a URI, which is that for URIs. So the reason for having the, uh, the, the URIs here is not for the server. The server should be able to, the server it's not to define what the server should be doing in terms of how it assigns identifiers. It's to avoid the client having to know how to construct your your eyes from the identifiers that a server might be providing because people's paths um, for the API might be different uh, the, the there might be differences in the um, identifiers that might mean things need to be encoded or something so rather than having to uh, specify a set of templates if a, if a, um, a client needs to turn say 159 into something you can interact with through the rest you know, restfully then after the server telling the client this is the URI you should use is, is I think, a cleaner design. I get that, actually. Um, so what you're effectively saying there is that um, with a bit of luck, if you've got one endpoint, you don't need to know what the rest are. Because the, the the kind of the, the timetable search or something would effectively take you down the rest of the paths to discover what the endpoints are. Yes. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, because otherwise you're left with publishing a you know you'd have to publish a set of kind of URI templates and you'd have to publish the kind of rules for kind of construction things. Whereas we don't, if you use this approach, then the server's got a bit more control over its own URI scheme. Um, okay. Um, I, I, I'm loath to cut short the discussion, but I'm late for another meeting. Um, As am I. I just noticed the time. So that sounds, well, thank you for the input. I mean, it sounds like this, this is very, very like detailed technical question, isn't it? I realize as we got into it. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll, um, we'll definitely, um, um, follow up with the implementation. I think maybe this is right in the wash when we actually continue to do the implementation that we're doing and see. Um, because I think, as you said, there, there is, yeah, there's benefit. I, I can see both sides. Uh, and so maybe we'll uh, persevere with the URIs and the ID. And if, if we get significant pushback uh, during implementation because it's a lot of extra work, um, maybe we'll consider that. For now, we, we keep them because, uh, as Lee's point is, it's, it's a better your API as a result of having them there. So if we can stick to that, then that's fine. Yeah. Guys, I've got to go. Sorry about that. All right. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, Nick, Sorry. just as wrapping up, so perhaps it would be useful to highlight some of these more technical discussions in, I know they're in the document, but whether just to surface them on the list so people, other people can get into the detail. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that sounds good. 
But if we're at this level of detail, then it's probably, we're probably in a good place with this. Um, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, um, we'll, we'll cover the validation stuff another time. Um, so thanks everybody, it was a really good useful discussion today. Cheers guys, cheers guys. Cheers. 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 Cheers.